Hello and welcome to session number 42 of Outlander's Guide to Lidaria. Hi, everyone. <coughs> Hello. Hello. I think I believe... this has been playing in my head for like five minutes. <laughs> I believe everyone is hyped to get answers to this session for some reason. Mm hmm. Hmm. Well, for no particular reason in session 42. <laughs> It's uh, the second session after our 40th session, guys. Yeah. That yeah. makes it the 42nd upon the list. 42, yeah. the number. It's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not significant. Let's it's, it's not lean into it. It's fine. <laughs> the math checks out. It is our second session after 40. Hmm. I'm, okay, let me I'm, bring I'm looking at your stream, and it's the first time I actually noticed that at the bottom of the loading screen, like at the starting screen, there is actually the volume of the song. Or whenever someone speaks. E yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. Is that me? I, no. Oh, Dennis. I just, I just <laughs> like the little details. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it only took me. <laughs> Literally there from day one. Now you, you know the answer. When our portraits light up when <laughs> that's we speak. the answer. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's, that, that's really what I meant. You goofy. <laughs> 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 Guys, have you noticed your Hero Forge characters are like on the screen? What? <laughs> Did you know that you're actually symbolized by your Hero Forge character? <laughs> oh. Yeah, she doesn't uh, just like go to your Facebook and use that. Oh. Where's the golden <laughs> flute? <laughs> are you guys actually looking at TTS while you play? <laughs> I. <laughs> I thought we just signed in as a formality. Yeah, I mean, I'm, Is something I'm in actually TTS, going on but it's here? behind the stream, which I keep full screened at all times. And just if <laughs> I kind of move my mouse, I can kind of see where it goes on the stream after like a couple seconds of delay. And then I just figure it out from there. That's why it takes me so long to roll. <laughs> <laughs> and also, okay. it's upside down, so. Okay, enough. <laughs> enough. Yeah, the, the, joke, <laughs> the joke is dead. Okay. Uh, but yeah, thank you for being here. Let, let's get moving. Uh, today's summary is uh, provided by the Jason of all Jasons, N the Novi of all Novi's, a bliss for all of us to be in his presence. All right, don't hype me up. I've got wow, nothing man, special. Really it's just notes. Notes. <laughs> all right. So. We started last session at the Dragon Wagon. We had to say goodbye to Brooke's friend, Leo. Uh, before we left, Brooke asked him to look into Pip's granny, giving him some info we've seen about the magical child abuse. We got a package from Brooke's friend, Casimir, addressed to Pip and Tekka. Uh, for Pip, it was a rock, uh, some kind of oval cut gem. Uh, he left a note it seemed to be to make up for not being a great hireling. Uh, Tekka got another rock, but this one on a ring. And uh, he seemed to think that Tekka was the one that was going to keep us alive. Uh, we got a rumor. Some sailors think that there's a bunch of treasure at the bottom of the sea. But we know that even if that's true, between us and them, there's a lot of devils. So don't know if that's going to actually be relevant anytime soon. Uh, Talix asked Baryanthar about whether we could resurrect... Uh, the Krelko, basically. If old resurrection that far back was possible for anyone in the Jade Council, uh, Baryanthar doesn't know of anyone who come back longer than ten or so days, I think number. Uh, aside from Vakanoth herself. So... That's a wash. We are visited by a red beak as we're about to go. Uh, we stop by, talk to Vadra. She's going to stay in the colony and learn from the elves about magic. And Talix uh, gets a magical flower petal. And we go by the bard, Roran, who performs two whole fables for us. And we get to learn a little bit more about the gods. Um, there are somewhat versions of things we'd heard before, but uh, with the tale of the fox and the fruits and the wyvern, we get to hear a bit more about their tender friendship, and it's very sweet. Um, and we get a little bit more insight into the background of the wolf and the, the raven, why the wolf and the raven had that falling out, and uh, what it led to. Um, 
basically go back and hear those fables again because I can't recap the whole things, but they're very nice, very beautiful. Uh, yeah, very sweet. I'm not going to go through all that. Um, uh, one more thing we did before we left. Uh, Pip looked. Uh, Pip had Squeak follow Shalira uh, home and also learned of her uh, her greatest phobia. And apparently she's claustrophobic. I don't know if that's actually going to come into play with whatever maniacal plans Pip has. But he does <laughs> stab her in the brain with magic before we leave. Uh, Pontifex bonds, quote-unquote, with his cat. Um, we explore the rest of Arn's Tower. Uh, we dissect a game of Dragon Chess that was left unfinished and learned that someone who was good at Dragon Chess was playing there. Two people who were good at Dragon Chess. Maybe it was Pontifex's parents, who knows. Uh, we uncover the properties of the other magical items. Uh, Pip can see into the dream world. Tekka gets a ring of free movement, uh, which is going to be quite useful, it seems. And we see a colorful dream moth, but we decide not to look into it. Uh, we arrive at Jamil's tower. Uh, Orm had flooded the tower with the ocean by opening the wrong door, destroyed all of his constructs, and possibly other things. Um... We take a vote on whether we want to try to bring Jamiel back. There's a bit of deliberation. Brooke thinks we might lose access to the tower, so he doesn't like it. But ultimately, most of the party decides that it's better that we try to do the right thing and don't leave Ladaria's biggest celebrity dead. So we try to bring him back, uh, but it doesn't happen. The machine doesn't work. We don't know if it's because of Orm's previous sabotage, or the flooding, or something else. Uh, we learn a bit more about the doors, the different doors we have access to. So aside from the one that goes to the ocean hell, uh, there's one that leads into some sort of white room where a woman's voice, who speaks Plurnan, uh, yelled out and asked for a password and said that uh, Orm wasn't allowed back. So we decided not to tempt fate with that one. One led to a jungle and one led into a hot cave, which in turn led to the bottom of a big canyon in a very, uh, very punishing desert. Um, after some shenanigans with the orb and the book, we figure out their general location. The hot cave seems to be at the very edge of the map of the continent we have so far in the northeast, and the jungle seems to be more to the west. Um, we'd ultimately decide to go to the jungle to explore, but only after Pip gets some sand from the desert. And that's about it. We're, we've already went through the door, or we're about to go through the door, and see this big jungle, much bigger than the jungle we saw last time, where rain doesn't even reach the floor and trees are like a mile high. And we have no idea what's about to happen, because we've never set foot in Sanger Ladaria before now. Looking forward to some big dinosaurs! Woo! I just yes. feel like there's going to be dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs! Why are you looking forward ba -ba, to them? Ba -ba, because it's dinosaurs! Ba -ba, ba -ba, oh. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's fair. Okay. In that case, I think you've earned, uh, you've earned uh, for yourself a Dinosaur inspiration. Yeah. Just as I had planned. <laughs> that's that's the dinosaur. <gasps> Wrong number. <laughs> this inspiration's right. broken. So um. <laughs> we have a new map. <gasps> I have Why? moved all Why of your previous so tokens to to here, so like I they should be about right. Wait. I hope. Wait, I don't remember this rumor, what? <laughs> what is this uh, rumor? The when you spoke to the silver claw uh person, the elf, she said that uh, <clears throat> there was some other like machine that they had uh, found out about and she gave it the, the approximate location. 
Oh, that was here? Oh, okay. Yeah, this awesome. was... Awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, indeed. So. On one side of the doorway is a tower you've, uh, um, you come to be quite familiar with. As bizarre as the room with all the doors is, uh, you've gotten to know it and you know that you will be back in here uh, probably many times in the future. On the other is a vibrant, colorful, and uh, noisy world. Uh, despite what, uh, what Pontifex's familiar had uh, um, been able to see earlier, um, there is no rain, no water that reaches you down here. You are on almost completely dry terrain and surrounded in every direction by plants, trees, flowers that you've never seen before. The first order of business is, uh, um, well, I have a question for the party. The door, the, 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 the doorway that you're currently walking through uh, has been, uh, uh, has been hidden. Uh, plen there's plenty of like plants and leaves and twigs and uh, even the location where it's been built. It's a, it's somewhat kind of a smaller door compared to uh, some of the other ones you've seen. Uh, it's designed to be hidden and uh, in your current location there is a, a dreadful lack of landmarks. So I want to know if there is anything you want to do to uh, be able to keep track of the door itself before you head off. I currently have the orb, right? Mm-hmm. The orb. Mm -hmm. Can I try to concentrate on the door? Just worth a shot. We know it's linked to specific things, and we know we don't know all the things that it's linked to. I don't know ah. if this is a thing of Jamil's. So you, want, you want to see if uh, the doorway itself is connected to the orb? Yes. Okay, roll an arcana check while I put on... Oh no, why am I the one doing it? this? Yeah. Okay. Um, while the... Uh, while holding the orb, you can very easily feel the location of the nearby book uh, currently in Pip's possession and of the faraway staff. Uh, and trying to focus on the door doesn't seem to get that, that feeling in your head of like, here it is, here's the doorway I'm looking for. Is this orb capable of tracking like magic items? It's specifically a set number of items that belong to Jamiel, and we don't know what all of them are. Mm. Okay. We won't know until we see the items. Hmm. Anything else you would like to try? I'm looking at some stuff. If anyone yeah, else has I'm anything. I'm pretty frantically looking through my things to see well, if there's anything. Uh, I mean, I have my detailed world map, but that's of just of uh, of not. It's just of the peninsula. You know, I mean, that's of Plurna. Mm. Yeah. Never mind. Oh. Oh, it's not even. Forget off. my crazy world map is Plurna. <laughs> I think. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You have you have a map of the peninsula, uh, but it definitely. Mm -hmm. like, isn't even half the size of what you need right now. Hmm. Okay. If we look around, are there like any landmarks? Okay. N no. Mm -hmm. I did yeah, not, so. uh, I forgot to mess with my prepared spells for the session for the day, but Talix just had a long rest and I think he had a chance to anticipate this. Okay, yeah, sure. So I'm going to change the prepared spell real quick. Retcon something. <laughs> Sorry. Last time I'll do it. Um, okay, so Talix is going to 
really try to focus on the um, on the flora around the door and just kind of lay down, clutch the seed and meditate for a bit and just try to really get in touch with this earth and like try to sense its energy with the natural magic that he has. This is unfamiliar to him, but this isn't the first time that he's had to try to kind of re-immerse himself in a new environment. Just like whenever he first came to the Zasperic Peninsula, right? So this is a new... Sort of like learning what nature is all over again, but... Feels like he can re-familiarize himself. Um, and he's going to go ahead and just sort of uh, to make sure that he's to affirm that he's in the right headspace. He's going to cast locate objects on the door now and see if it takes hold. Locate object. Yes, <clears throat> which does have a limited range of a thousand feet, but. Okay. Can he cast Locate Object on this door? You can. This door frame <clears throat> and the door itself are uh, familiar. You've seen them, you're directly ahead uh, in front of them, you touch them, you get a feel for the materials and colors. Uh, this is a particular uh, doorway that you're focusing on. Um, and uh, your, your magic uh, manages to sort of like uh, attach itself to it. Um, and in a very similar manner to how the the orb feels, you get this feeling in the back of your mind, like you know exactly where this thing is. Well, of course you do, but if you were to be away from it, you'd be able to like walk back right to it. I feel pretty comfortable. Well, okay. Out of character, I feel like there's a pretty good chance we can get at least within a thousand feet of this. Right, thing. like between just Talix natural and between Talix's survival checks and like Pontifex's just general memory and like super crazy investigation and all that. I'm sure that with like with the two of us, we could get back here. As long as we can find our way to this neck of the woods. Right, or I yeah, or at least find our way back within a thousand feet of it. I feel like I've. I can find the spot again. We should leave it hidden. <clears throat> it, if it was hidden, it was hidden for a reason, and... It's very likely there's uh, an important political reason that we might not want to uh, test right now. So, leave it as is, and... I can find our way back here. Hmm. Okay, is there anything else? All right. Now my second now question. Oh, yeah, what is it? Which way do we go? Yeah, that's the question. You read my mind. We, we know we're somewhat close to the coast. Well, close. Did we want to go to the coast or where do we want to go? Tell you what, <clears throat> uh, you can all uh, start by rolling a perception check. Oh. Mm. Oh. <gasps> oh. I did it! Oh my god. <laughs> it's been ages. <laughs> okay. Missing Pip. All right. Uh, oh wow, that's that's all of you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Nailed it. Uh, yeah. Um, just looking around directly in the area uh, immediately surrounding this doorway, um, there are signs that whoever has come through here uh, often um, tended to be heading in one particular direction. Uh, you can see that some of the the um, 
Oh, the word escapes me. The underbush? N the undergrowth. Haha. Uh -huh. um, some of the undergrowth has been sort of like opened up. Plants have been slashed uh, away. Uh, a grass is bent at an, at an angle where it's been walked on. Uh, and it, these signs are actually a little subtle. Um, it's been a while since anyone has used this entryway, but you can, you all pick up on the fact that uh, it seems like somebody has been adding a lot directly from this spot further to the northwest. Oh, well, looks like Jamuel's trail. Plus, I think this is the only way we could possibly go with horses. <clears throat> right. Please, without cutting down the entire forest. Oh, so, yeah. Let's follow I mean, the trails. Cutting is so menial and time consuming. Burning yeah, is exactly. usually the effective, but yeah, it, oh. it is either here nor there, it doesn't matter. Mm. Let's see what he had here. Okay. Um, the final, final question is uh, the food situation. Is this something that uh, I, I see that Alex has a certain spell prepared? And if we want to go that way, yes, Alex can keep us fed now. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Very cool. <clears throat> I'm sure Pip in this place would absolutely be looking for, you know, whatever he can, whether it's edible or he can use it as an ingredient or whatever. Whether it's edible or looks <laughs> edible. <laughs> or it's a rock. Or it's just very colorful. Yeah. It's also edible. Pip is like just in super curiosity mode. Just like <laughs> this is all strange and new and exciting, and it's like he'll he'll touch stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I'm I'm going to take in that case a survival roll from whoever is leading, and a check from Pip uh, with proficiency from the from the herbalism kit. Uh, to see what kind of stuff he finds. Alex would be fine leading. Okay. From a top duchess. <laughs> if everyone's okay with that. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. All right. So is, was that a d20 plus proficiency, or is there, like, a skill associated with it? Um... Good decision. If, if you're proficient with the tool, then that is the proficiency. Yeah, and yes. the, the ability is usually oh, right, wisdom, the ability. I think. Which yeah, I that's what I was thinking. What like, wisdom, since yeah. it's associated with it's survival. Wisdom. Let's go with, with wisdom. Okay. That sounds good. It's, yeah, it's like perceptive, perceptive anyway. Perception, medicine, survival, all the Look above. at all these high rolls. Right. Kill them last, boys. Below a ten. <laughs> Get all these rolls now. <laughs> And then it's like, you know, fight the dire dinosaur. <laughs> the dire T-Rex. Twelve T-Rexes <laughs> fall from the sky. <laughs> Deck saves to avoid smoosh. Okay, and lastly, for the person who is leading, Talix, are you looking for anything in, in, in particular? Um, are you just trying to follow the trail? Uh, anything I should know. Well, this is an unfamiliar place filled with lots of noises, and we've had scary encounters in the jungle before. So I think Talix is going to, at least until we get to a safe place, uh, kind of not worry about the curiosity and the science right now. More about just our, you know, look out for things that might hurt us, uh, any noises that sound like they're approaching. And then, yeah, any signs of any uh, unnatural activity from Janiel okay. or anyone else. All right, perfect. So, with uh, Talix leading the way, you begin to make your way through this uh, uh, different jungle. Uh, now, with all of you being unfamiliar with b with the the actual area and kinds of uh, dangers that he might hide. And the fact that, that there is two of you on horseback, and this trail is ultimately, it's, it's, it's hardly a, a trail. Um, it does slow you down. Um, it's something you have to move through, uh, not, just <clears throat> not just slowly and cautiously, but 
Uh, occasionally you have to just like straight up stop and hack at some points or find a way around um, as this uh, this jungle is quite uh, quite thick with uh, with plants with life uh, and of course there is your own curiosity you often stop to look at a, at a new flower a new fruit or uh, you pause whenever you hear a strange sound off in the distance and these sounds uh, uh, some are familiar uh, there's birds chirping but uh, um, not not kinds of birds you've heard before uh pip to, to your ears uh, this entire place is just singing with life it uh, <clears throat> it it feels exciting and and uh, um you don't feel particularly scared of being in a new place um wow there's there's new things and there is uh, you don't pick up on any like animals uh, um uh, uh, growling or uh, telling others to back off or, or signs of like fighting nearby. Uh, the first day of travel is ultimately a, a, a slow but safe one. Um, Pip, you collect uh, uh, an assortment of plants on this day that uh, for the time being uh, um you're, you're not really sure what you're gonna do with them. Uh, but you have them. You nice. find something uh, which you... Uh, in the evening... Oh yeah, actually, let me check. Do you set up Arin's Tower in the evening? Huh. Is there a, a sufficient clearing where we can do so, or is it going to be like knocking over fifty trees and uh, the way you've seen the way you've seen how this tower works? It sort of incorporates its its surroundings into itself, and then once it goes away, it brings things back the way they were. So, for example, oh. if you were too close to a tree, the tree would be bent into a way that it becomes part of the outer wall. But once the tower is gone, the, ta the tree is back in its original shape. Okay, then. Uh, seems like the safer thing to do, right? Rather be in a, a defendable place. Okay. So... Out in the open. Uh, back to what I was saying, the, the plants that Pip finds, uh, he's later able to just cross-reference with uh, uh, Arin's uh, own uh, uh, notes. Uh, one of them <clears throat> is called uh, uh, the Morning Dew. Uh, it's a plant that grows uh, uh, into either a large shrub or a small tree and seems to reproduce via root systems since it has no flowers of any kind. Uh, you end up plucking some of its leaves which apparently are used in teas and medicine. For a total of eight leaves. What were the rules of beyond the peninsula again for the, for the learnings? You're not supposed not to, to take build? anything or to leave anything. And also not to build anything, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's okay, this is a temporary structure. <laughs> you think we're so? Not, we're not leaving anything. I was just more thinking in case someone sees it at night. But here, is there any proof would it be gone once you do summon the tower, right? So that should be yeah. fine. All right. <clears throat> Something else that uh, Pip ends up finding, uh, they are called Everfrost Berries. Uh, they're blue heart-shaped berries, uh, the size of a blueberry. Uh, they're known for their purifying properties. Uh, the name comes from the fact that these plants uh, um, are apparently immune to any kind of uh, cold damage. And uh, there is usually an, an, an abundance of them uh, during uh, winter. When you pause to like pick some of those up and uh, uh, later learn of their names and properties, um, it's apparent that uh, 
Maybe you, you Pip, don't have the word for it yet, but this is this is what you would. Uh, uh, this is a plant that is obviously not from this area, and uh, uh, you wonder how it ended up here in the first place. Ah, uh, okay. You find eight. No, wait, I'm missing a die. Eight plus one, nine of these berries. Did you say I got eight leaves off the one morning dew, or was that... What did I, you say? I have put away my <laughs> dice. I don't know how many, oh. how many I rolled. Okay, I know you I, said... I heard eight. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is like a... It's a bit of a group uh, uh, group effort on finding these particular ingredients. Uh, Pip is the one who ends up like wanting them and setting them aside for later use, but um, he would definitely give one of the leaves to Talix for his journal okay. and a berry if he wants it. <laughs> I don't know if he smushes berries in there. Uh, generally no, but he'll sketch one and take notes about it. Okay, uh, can we move on to the next day, or is there anything you want to do during the long rest? Somebody had mentioned to me that they wanted to have a certain conversation, but I don't know if now is the time. Mm, not yet. Okay. <laughs> Alright, just checking with you. Um, Pip, occasionally you look through your... Uh, through your new gem, and the surroundings look uh, uh, pretty similar through it. Uh, nothing in particular to report. There's always small differences here and there, but uh, um, uh, nothing that particularly attracts your attention. Okay. And just to clarify, I don't see any of my friends when I look through it, right? You don't. Do I see myself? Uh, you don't. Interesting. Okay. I had the same thought. Uh, 18 was uh, was Talix's survival, right? The last roll in chat yep. from him? Okay, okay. Yep. thank you. Okay. I'm not going to make you roll each day. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, let me know at any point, at any moment, if there's something you need to do. If you need to interrupt me for any reason, uh, I'm not can going I to. Add, can I add guidance to that survival roll? Sure, yeah, go ahead, from, from like the following day onward. Yes. <laughs> nice. So it's uh, 19, got 19. It. I think uh, that that morning, uh, Squeak would come back after having spent the whole previous day at the beach, and okay. he's cooled off a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, he's cooled off, and he actually returns with a small pouch. Uh, that he hands over to you. Uh, you know, small, like, for him. So it's particularly tiny in your hands. Um, and when, when you take a look inside, you see uh, something that almost looks like black dust, and you stick your finger in. It's sand, specifically. Huh? And he, he lets you know that he scraped this uh, from the uh, bottom of the, well, beach. Squeak! Pip gives him a big hug until he <laughs> <laughs> disappears and reappears on Pip's shoulder. <laughs> yeah, none of that, thank you. Just yeah, put it in. Put it in the other pouch. <laughs> Later. All right, we good. <laughs> Okay, right into it. Uh, of note today is uh, um, a, a discovery that uh, um, that the entire party ends up enjoying of a new edible uh, fruit, uh, something that uh, later you you learn that uh, uh, Arin, Arin calls a grunts, spelled <laughs> too flu. <laughs> 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 uh, 
It's a fruit that has uh, uh, slices like an orange, uh, but the, the consistency in seeds is more uh, similar to that of a strawberry. And uh, the first time you, you touch it, uh, on the outside it's, it's yellow and it leaves this yellow powder residue on your fingers that ultimately turns out to be harmless, um, but like very, very bitter to the taste. Uh, you end up finding, uh, oh Jesus, 21 of them. <laughs> You don't is have the to whole pick them thing all bitter up. or just the outside? Oh, just the outside uh, is is bitter. The inside is, uh, I said consistency in seeds, but also the flavor is similar issue to a strawberry. Uh, it feels a little bit more mild. Nice. <laughs> uh, and secondly, as you've been. Uh, you've also been paying attention to the uh, uh, to the animals uh, besides uh, the plants, and uh, you've observed some some new birds I haven't seen before. Uh, a squirrel with a strange coloration, with uh, with stripes uh, uh, going down its back, uh, um, and then you come across a tortoise. And at first, uh, um, when you first saw it. Uh, you hadn't even realized that you were looking at an animal. You thought you were looking at a big boulder. Uh, but then you see a head slowly emerging from it. Uh, this tortoise, besides being uh, absolutely massive, like you could, you could sit on one of them and just ride it into battle. Um, but the shell itself seems to be made of rock. <gasps> uh. No, I mustn't. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that turtle is like big enough to to sit upon. Like who could ride it into the battle? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the king of all rocks, Pip. <laughs> oh my goodness! Can I can I go talk to it? <laughs> you, you can give it a try. I would be upset if you didn't. Oh my goodness! Hello, your magnificence. <laughs> oh, you are tremendous. What's your name? Ah, uh, the, the, the tortoise retreats back into its rock shell. Oh no, I've offended him. <laughs> it bows deeply. <laughs> <laughs> Roll an animal Pres handling check. Presents his rock collection one <laughs> at a time. <laughs> Just places them down in front of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, uh, the tortoise seems uh, very shy, very wary of you. Uh, you just see its eyes as like only part of the head of the head is still um, cautiously poking out of its rock shell, uh, and it watches from a good distance as you place down each rock in front of it. Uh, it's not leaving, but it's also not like approaching you either. I really like your shell. I don't want it or anything, but it's really nice. I I collect rocks, and it looks like you have a really nice one. You see it just taking a step back. Please don't go. <laughs> what else are we saying to it? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um. Wait, I have an idea. Here, Pip, take one of my fruits. Oh, maybe it likes the grunts. You, you want some? Pip holds it out, sort of pushes it with his finger. Uh, roll another check. That's basically your your advantage from Talix. Ah, uh, thank you, Talix. Alex, you suck. <laughs> you're, you're scaring it away. <laughs> you're literally the worst. <laughs> uh, this, this tortoise doesn't seem interested in the fruit, and instead it's slowly still backing away until it uh, begins to turn around. Wait, I have so many more questions. How old are you? What's your name? Do you have a family? <laughs> and it wobbles off. 
You can't run from me. <laughs> Are you changing it? <laughs> He's like visually walking next to it as it's just running at top speed. <laughs> no, you can't leave. Uh, I'll let it go. That didn't seem like it went well. No. All right. It's all right. Talus is going to step in. <gasps> I'm going to cast Animal Friendship. <laughs> if you won't be a friend to my boy willingly, I will take away consent. <laughs> you will be his friend. <laughs> now. Animal Friendship. <laughs> non consent All it does is it... It makes it clear to the beast that I do not intend it harm. That's true. It also can if it has an intelligence of four or higher, it won't work. But I'll I'll know that that's the case. Okay. Um, Talix. Something bizarre happens when you cast a spell. Um, you feel like it does not take hold, uh, but not in the sense that, uh, you know, some, some animals sometimes manage to escape its effects, but it feels more like uh, there wasn't uh, a, a valid target for it, uh, as if you tried to cast it on a person or on uh, uh, a tree. Not the, the conclusion, yeah. <laughs> Uh, is that this animal is apparently not an animal. Oh, God. What? Pip, could you speak to this? Or did um, it not understand you? I mean, I spoke to it, but it didn't say anything back. There's something strange about this tortoise. Aha, and strange is where I come to the rescue. <laughs> uh, let me take a whack at this. <laughs> well, Please don't whack the tortoise. No. <laughs> the <laughs> saunter up next to the fling tortoise on the back of uh, on the back of Faroom Vasakir al Haram. Let's go do a hello, friend. And he says this in primordial. <laughs> I'm trying to speak whatever. What's it called? Terran. Got it. Um, yeah. Okay, all I can tell you guys is that, it, is that the tortoise is attempting to outrun all of you at this point. <laughs> it's, of course, not particularly effective, but it is moving away from all of you, and none of you have heard it speak back to you. Uh, including Pontifex, your language is just now. All right, Squeak tries. Which roughly translates to, hey, I'm Squeak. How you doing? <laughs> okay. Let me just take a quick look at each of your cardo sheets. But, um, <laughs> yeah, no, no. Um, it, regardless of the languages you will all attempt, um, the tortoise will not react to any of them. Uh, and there comes a moment where it just, like, just hides in its shell. It's, it's uncanny this how... This thing thinks it can escape us? Fat <laughs> chance. It, 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 yeah. it, it's crazy. It just looks like an, a boulder when it hides inside of its shell. Like, the shell itself is not symmetrical. It's, like, visibly... It, it, it's visibly made to, like, just uh, um, blend in with its surroundings and not look like a creature at all. Do you think it could be considered a beast? Oh, what do you mean? Well, if it's not an animal, maybe it's like a magical beast. Well, no, I... I, I specifically... <laughs> Beasts are where I'm okay. Uh, oh. This is something else. I mean, maybe more like a... Well, I don't even know. A plant? I can talk to plants. <laughs> try it! Try it! 
Hello, can you understand me? And I use speech of beast and leaf. Oh my I can't god, you've always him, been able to speak to plants this whole time? I have used it once. Oh, I don't remember, but I believe you. But It's when the big plants came from the ground right at the plans. start. Oh yeah! Uh, they can understand the meaning of your words, so you have no special ability to understand them in return. Um, okay, well. Alright, so you speak out and you don't hear a reply from anything around you. Oh. By process of elimination, we need to conclude that it's a fungus. <laughs> <laughs> well. <clears throat> suppose we better leave it alone. Yeah, maybe you'll see it again, Pip. It'll never catch up. Well, maybe we'll come back. Okay. Pip s somberly picks up all of his rocks and says goodbye. The tortoise will remain in its shell until you're gone. Put it on the quest lock, Austin. <laughs> quest. <laughs> New quest. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's cursed. <laughs> maybe I can break its curse. <laughs> just, just try everything. <clears throat> okay. What was Tekka doing that whole time? <laughs> I want to know. Uh, Tekka is probably just going to look around the nearby flora. Uh, does not take much of an interest. We'll probably actually, yeah, if, if this is happening for a few minutes, he'll probably start like digging the ground. Yeah, this, this, this sounds like it's been a, like a 50 minute ordeal. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think, yeah, Tekka has started like digging the ground beneath mm -hmm. the roots. The trees here. Try to look for uh, any insects. That kind of thing. Okay. Looking for grubs. Uh, are they? Yeah. Are they? Are they for your for your little friend? Mm-hmm. For Oli. Uh, there is absolutely on. plenty of food available here for Oli. Uh, it's not difficult to find at all. Are they ants? Do they look different? Uh, the ants here look like the ants you're used to. Oh. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Uh, moving on to the following day. <laughs> Ants conquered the die first. Oh, that's a wrong die. <clears throat> okay. You know, before we leave the turtle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there is one more thing I can try, if oh. you all desperately want to speak to him. Yeah, go for it. I haven't done this in a while because it usually doesn't work here, but back in Plurna, I can use magic to understand most languages. Unless this turtle that has likely been born, lived and raised in Ladaria for the entirety of his existence and never encountered anyone Plurnan short of Jamuel himself somehow doesn't speak Ladarian language then uh, maybe wait well what about can you read its mind yeah I have to speak oh. a language I can read its mind it'll just be a bunch of gibberish oh <laughs> and this is assuming its mind is even readable it has to be to like a certain level for me to even get in there you think of my mind reading spell as like a, like me walking through a door. Uh, the door is proportional to their intelligence, and if it is not enough, the door is too small. Wow. I can't imagine any door would be large enough to accommodate your uh, <laughs> head. Oh, no, I, down I mean your brain. <laughs> On like a scale of like a 1 to 20 of the necessary door size, is like a 3. Oh, okay. Uh, 
Wrong, it is like a four. <laughs> My head is slightly too big for three. But anyways, I could try it. It will just take me like 10 minutes. Why not? So what are you casting? Comprehend languages. I'll sketch some plants. Okay. Comprehend. I need to stop closing this tab. Comprehend languages. Yeah. Understand the literal meaning of any spoken language that you hear. Okay. In which case, I can tell you that the tortoise is not speaking. Uh, well, once he casts the spell, he's gonna go for him. <laughs> Hello. This <laughs> 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 is gonna knock on it. Um, it it, it, it kind of hurts. It's a very just very hard shell against your fragile old knuckles um but yeah no there is no speaking coming from this tortoise we'll see now i am just so you all are aware i'm slightly annoyed because i don't know if this spell actually works or if it is just being rude so i there's a lot of me that is wants to just force a noise out of him and see if i understand it no no it's okay like, I could, like, uh, like fill his shell with water and just see what happens. Uh, okay, <laughs> let's... Professor? <laughs> I don't think any of us are this curious. If it's a tr creature, it has to drink. I don't see any around here, so maybe it would be saving him a trip. It would take him all day to get to a pond. I'm sure it's fine. Bah. I hate how clearly I can understand your intentions. <laughs> I know okay. you're saying that, but I understand that the literal meaning of what you say is leave it alone, let us leave, you're annoying. And that hurts. <laughs> okay, back to... This is to... why I don't use this spell. <laughs> back to the, the future of the following day. Uh, every once in a while, Pontifex and Pip send their uh, respective familiars uh, above the the canopy of the jungle. Uh, you do this multiple times per day regularly, just to see if there's any uh, particular uh, landmarks that you can spot, any way of orienting yourself, and even just to figure out where east and west are. Um, uh, it's around the third day when the trail left by Jamiel has become uh, just... He, he, it doesn't look like, like he has... Uh, treaded exactly the same path every time uh, and at some point you're just left going in the general direction that he was heading towards uh, but no longer exactly following his his footsteps uh, but at the very least so that's this is the first time when uh, the the two familiars report actually spotting something uh, different in the surroundings of, uh, of the jungle uh, and specifically it's uh, um, on this on this day, which is clearer, uh, they can see the, the sky and the sun. Uh, further up ahead, they see something that kind of looks like a gray-colored fog. A bug? Fog? fog with an F. Oh, fog. Uh, it feels like there's a low gray cloud. Um, the up ahead, roughly where you're going, and it's uh, their own visibility from above the canopy is is blocked by it. Uh, and the, the the two of them will observe this for a while, and it doesn't appear to be moving at all. I thought it was Bog B O G. <laughs> um, but so does it look like a storm or? Uh... Um, both people and Pontifex can see through the eyes of the familiar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So they'd be able to tell that it, it, it is not. There is no no rain or lightning or thunder. And they're quite a distance away still to like see any details beyond that, but it doesn't look like storm cloud at all, no. Is that yep. something? Oh, oh, you're good. Is that something you can walk around? Like, is there like a cube of it, or? Oh, uh, there, 
There is like more jungle on both sides if you wanted to avoid it. Okay. Uh, Squeak would turn invisible and then just go into the cloud and see if he can see anything that might be inside. Yeah, all right. Uh, he'll just be gone for a little while because you, uh, I'm like I'm telling you long before you get anywhere near near it. Uh, but you can absolutely right. send him ahead. Hmm? How far ahead are you wanting this? Sorry, I, you cut off at the end. What was that? Oh, 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 oh. Send him from us. Oh. How, how far ahead are you sending him from us? Oh. Uh, <laughs> can you hear me? Hello? Is this something that's uh, going to take like several days to reach him? If, oh, did our... Oh, I don't know. Yeah, our internet is having a hiccup. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at my stream. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah, my, my stream dropped for a moment and so did our Discord. But it seems like it picked back up. Oh, Jason wait, it's red again. talking and then sped up. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 I had to make up for lost time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How far ahead? Am I still hearing you? Are you okay? No. Are you still not hearing me right now? <laughs> Hello? Oh god! Holy crap! We can, we can. <laughs> okay. Uh, if we're all here, then we're good to resume. And... Boop. Boop. Okay. So we were uh, before the break, before the internet problems. Uh, we were dealing with the discovery of this sort of uh, um, gray cloud thing off in the distance. And I believe Jason was in the process of asking uh, Pip slash Austin uh, how far it was going to send, to send a squeak. Is that, is that it? Yeah, I just... So how far away are we right now from the cloud? You're about uh, perhaps three to four miles away. Oh. Yeah, we can wait a little while longer. <laughs> uh, unless we don't plan on going that direction. Yeah, um, let's. Well, let's get like as long as the path that we're following seems to be going into it. Like, let's wait till like we get kind of towards the edge. I think. I think then. I think Pip sure. would send Squeak up and forward so that he can maybe see just how big this cloud is. Uh, in terms of how big it is, it is huge. Um, it feels like it covers uh, uh, a tremendously big area of this jungle. Um, it doesn't feel like it's its a wall. It looks more like it's curved. Um, so you, in theory, it could potentially go around, but it would be quite, uh, quite the detour. Gotcha. Does this seem like a natural phenomena? <clears throat> how close does Quick get? Uh, I guess as we're moving forward and we realize that this isn't something we can easily go around, um, as we move forward, once we get, like, maybe a mile away, then then Pip might send Squeak into it. Okay. Um, let, me, let me clarify that it's not like suddenly there's a cloud. Um, it's, you know, in the, the, way, the way the clouds are, there isn't, like, a very defined limit to it. Uh, just slowly, things begin to get a little bit more gray, and then, ultimately, he can't see, like, any further into it. Um, <clears throat> so you're... And I'm assuming it's not magical darkness, it's just, uh, <laughs> just <laughs> no, a No, I, I would tell you, right. Uh, okay. No, Squeak is unable to, like, see any further into it. Uh, but as you're about, what did you say, a mile away? Yeah. Okay, uh, slowly before we get there... Um, oh, I put this in the wrong place. <laughs> um, as you're beginning to, you're, you're slowing down even even further uh, to, to uh, as you're approaching this strange phenomenon. Uh, and while on the way, uh, Brooke, you trip over something and you just fall on your face. Uh. <clears throat> what was what that? Can I take a look? Yeah, I mean, um, you you know, you you pull yourself back up and you look at the, where you tripped, and there isn't really anything that you can see that would have caused you to trip. There is tall grass, uh, flowers where you were walking, uh, but like there isn't a big uh, uh, any big roots. No, his shoes are not tied together. <laughs> it felt like you kicked something very hard. Like your 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 big toe hurts. <laughs> I love that you can't type shoes. 
<laughs> yeah, because of those. <laughs> I, I have that turned off, so I don't even know. Oh, me too. We set up a profanity filter. It just says. It's... Yeah, it, it moved out holes from the worst. <laughs> it's the worst <laughs> profanity filter. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Can I try? Oh, no, it didn't filter hose. It just filtered ho in particular. So it's S O S. S O S. Can I try to feel out with my food? Yeah, absolutely. Is there something? Uh, you you just you just feel in that air with your foot, uh, and and where you move your leg, the the grass uh, under your foot is is bending uh, until you tap against something solid, one of the many flowers. It doesn't look particularly different from all the other ones, but like as you're tapping it with more and more strength, it just feels uh, solid, like it's a statue of fl of a flower rather than an actual flower. What is this? Telix, can you take a look at this? Oh, uh, okay. It's a statue of, of a flower? It's a very solid flower. That's why I tripped. I think? Okay. Yeah, supposedly sturdy enough that it stopped the brook of all people. <laughs> Okay, so it's it's a rigid flower. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, otherwise, it looks totally normal. Well, uh, beginning Stone. by rolling uh, 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 an investigation check, it does look okay. normal. But like compared to it all the other stone. ones, uh, the the colors are a lot more muted. The petals are gray. The stem uh, there's barely any green to it. Uh, it has these big round uh, uh, petals. It, it, it kind of looks like a big uh, uh, daisy. And our round opal, uh, oval shaped <laughs> petals. It uh, looks like a very big daisy. And um, okay. you're beginning to, to touch it and sure enough it's, it's solid. And you look at the ground beneath it and you begin to s sort of like dig around it. And you ultimately just end up pulling the whole thing out of the ground, roots and all. And every part of it is just rock solid. Huh. But there are other flowers around it that look like the same species, but are not stone. Is that correct? Ah, uh, yes. They look like the same species, Do but I... those are more colorful. Well, so... Talix cannot discern anything else from this? Like, he doesn't know what this is? It just looks like uh, a sort of like statue version of the flowers around it. So you wouldn't think that this used to be a normal flower that was petrified, for example? Um, I'm, maybe? Can Are you going to check if there's magic upon it? Oh, I don't think I can. But you request the oh. assistance of... Say it. <laughs> Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> can't oh. you can't you see magic? Is there? Sure, I can. Seems like I'll it might have been detect... petrified magically. <laughs> yeah, I'll use the tech magic. Oh, screw you guys! I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that something you can do, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's fine. I'm just I'm gonna go and sit for a bit. You want to do it, Professor? No, no, it's good. I'm In go fact, it might be a curse. Try. Pip, maybe you should back. look at this. Mm. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's a rock. I don't see how that could be a curse, but. Aww. Well, I, I don't mean, it would be would my work. dream. <laughs> you, you would want to be a rock? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there is curse no rock. magic upon this flower that the brook can detect. Hmm. Uh. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, Telix, but this is a flower rock, not magic. Natural. Can Seems? I keep it? Uh, uh, well, certainly. I think we should. Here, keep it. Wait, 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 wait. We can't what? keep things from here. Well, 
Why? Ooh. I don't think this was done naturally. I mean, look, this this is the same as those flowers. I think this is something that was done to it. I mean, surely this isn't an artisan's work either, because it still retains some of its colors, and it's it's just too complex. There's the root system and all. No one would go through that much effort. Maybe it's a disease. Maybe it's something else. I think hmm. we should try to learn from it. Do you need help? I would like to use the speech of Beast and Leaf. <laughs> <laughs> Wiggle if you need help. <laughs> Move if you... I don't think this one can talk anymore, but maybe those can. Maybe that you can... Maybe well, they can tell you something about what happened to it. There is a problem with that. That communication is only a one way uh, I need to get up for a second. You guys keep going. Like, I can talk to them, but... Well, they can talk to me, but I don't understand them. Huh. That's why I suggested movement. I can suggest movement to the flowers around it. If we have sure. like, definite questions. Um. Yeah. We... Uh. Did. I'm just waiting for Windsor to come back. <laughs> to ask the question. Unless you have like a very specific one in mind. I mean, you go for it. Uh, I'm back. What a miss. Uh, so we're we're asking the flowers around it. Since oh, this one what are you asking move. to these random flowers? Well, is this flower friend of yours normal? If yes, wiggle right. If no, wiggle left. <laughs> <laughs> How do they mm. know which way is right and left? <laughs> I'm just assuming that you're plants right have a sense of Well, you're right, you're right. The problem is that if the surrounding flowers are not uh, rocky, uh, can't move willingly, they're just plants. <laughs> Wiggles ambiguously. <laughs> hmm. Was that the you, flower or the Can the rocky flower move? It does. Can it? So they can't do anything to... Wait, what is what is the point of speaking to the plants? I mean, they can't do anything to answer back? Uh, well, it says... Uh, they can understand the meaning of your words, though you have no special ability to understand them in return. Now, he, his ability works on beasts and plants. So with beasts, you can imagine that they'd be able to communicate back uh, non-verbally. But with plants, I imagine it would only work on, pa on plant creatures. Oh, okay. Or if you could, like, well, animate them in some other way. That's awkward. That's... <laughs> but hey, there's that thing where, like, if you're trying to grow plants, it's good to talk to them? <laughs> Makes them healthier? Um, Pip just sort of, like, uh, starts tugging a little bit on Talix's shirt and says, uh, Hey, hey, Talix? Oh, yeah, what, what is it? I think I read about something like this in your dad's book. About plants and stuff? Turning into stone? Yeah, because there's this plant called Willow Shade that, uh, I mean, it's something that can be used to undo things that have been turned into stone. But I don't know what would have caused this. Uh, hmm. Well, I think if we find any of that willow shade, we should definitely. Well, let's look for it. Yeah. Um. Because since... if we're gonna go into there when there's something that can maybe turn things into stone, we'd probably want to have some of that on hand. I can make some. I can make something with it if we just had a day. Let me, let me tell you that you know that willow shade bushes grow on the coastline and in swamps. 
it generally requires a lot of water. So are you sure you didn't say bog earlier? <laughs> <laughs> I did not say bog. Uh, in fact, compared to earlier, the, this area of the jungle feels uh, like drier. There's less, uh, there's like no mud, and it hasn't been raining uh, today at all as well. Remind me which direction here are we going? Northwest. Northwest. So, like, that way. Okay. Um, I'm not placing this in the exact location because you don't know where the door exactly is, but you know, you're in the area. And the fog is like wide, wide, like. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hmm. I mean. Well, if we. It's... Okay, if we. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was wondering how far out from the coastline can they grow? Like, do we have to be like right here? It, it, so this plant grows like partially submerged in water. It's sort of like, sort of like rice, you know? Um, yeah. So you probably be, have to be like right up to it or maybe find a river. But in, in salt water? Uh, I guess so. Okay. I don't know, I'm just looking at this. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, there's two varieties. There's a salt water variety and the... <laughs> okay, yeah, that seems legit. <laughs> sure. Um, look, look, I just have it down as coast and swamp. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um... So, how many things do we need to see that have been turned into stone before we think maybe it's a good idea to turn around? I mean, there's a trail. Tramiel went this way. Can't be too dangerous, right? This is the part where Squeak returns with uh, a new update. Um, there's been something going on with Squeak, but Pip was currently not looking through uh, through his eyes. Um, so he comes down to get you. Uh, he spotted up ahead flying a wyvern. He what? He spotted oh. a wyvern flying up ahead, right at oh, the okay. right at the edge of this uh, this fog. It might be looking for us. Did it see Squeak? It didn't look like it did. Okay. Um. So yeah, there's a there's a wyvern flying around. Like a, a mail carrying one. Uh, I didn't see anyone on spec. Well, I'm gonna. Wait, why would there be a... There can't be a wyvern all the way out here. We're so far from Zostberg. Are they Must... Ladarian wyverns? Would Jamuel have had a wyvern? We gotta go see. I Looking mean, up... the worst that could happen. It sounds great to me. Looking up... How possible does it seem to uh, climb to the canopy? Ooh, uh, is this like person? you know a branch every fifty feet or something? Like... Uh, let me, let me, let me, let me roll for it. At this area, <laughs> uh, there's big, sturdy branches on the majority of the trees around here. It is quite a climb, and like. Even reaching a quarter of the way up and falling would be fatal. Um, it would definitely be something you'd want to do safely with, with ropes, uh, uh, tying yourself to it, and, you know, whatever other means you have to limit uh, um, the, the possibility of getting hurt. Uh, and it's not something you, want, you would want to do... Uh, uh, what's, what's, a, what's a word for... You know, like, without equipment, uh, just, just freely. Um, 
but possible it's possible and it would depend on your level of confidence and the physical strength how tall are these trees very are these the like the tallest trees pip has ever seen yeah easily pip pip would uh reach down and grab a sprig <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> Well, what do you think? Shouldn't we check out? I mean, there's no natural reason the wyvern should be out here, so it seems interesting, right? I mean, we have no real direction to go, so... I'm for it. All right. Climber's kit. <laughs> you, ha you have a climber's kit? Oh, yeah. Okay. I okay. replaced it after I lost the first one oh, in the right. first time. In session one, session two. Oh, one, session okay, two. Climber's yeah. kit. Climber's um, kit, blah, blah, blah. You can it's... use the climber's kit as an action to anchor yourself. You can't fall more than 20 feet. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly what you need. Yeah. I'll be what, are going we going up, up or tree. down? Do up. you want to go up? I'm going up. Okay. I'm going to go talk to the wyvern. Yep. Squeak, yeah. uh, how big was this wyvern? Like one of the little puppy ones that you can put on your lap? <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> more like uh more like uh, the one you guys met when mail was delivered to you just one uh, squeak could see that it was green it was a big green wyvern or a sort of wyvern however you want to pronunciate it I have no idea anymore does a climbing kit include a way for two people to like be safe with each other yeah. where you had Okay. No. You would need two. What if I use my rope? And combine it with a... <laughs> no, no well, you would like, need two climbers key. And like, I, well, it wouldn't be 100%, but you could probably like tie the two of us together. Of course, it's... Of course, this is only rated for... Uh, <laughs> one person's body weight, but I'm pretty light, hmm. but you are not, bro. I'm no not. Offense. Well, I'm way bigger than you, so no offense taken. Um, You're also, like, a distance away from the wyvern itself still. Not just, like, vertically, but horizontally, too. It's Is it at the beginning of the fog? Yeah. I guess we could just send Squeak up there and see if it can communicate with the Wyvern. Oh, yeah, yeah, just volunteer me to talk to the big flying monster. <laughs> I mean, Pep, you speak with animals, so can you... Does that work through Squeak? Is that a thing? Um... Hmm. He... Maybe. You would not be able to communicate with a Wyvern, because it's not a beast. Uh, they're not? <laughs> nothing's nothing's beasts <laughs> what's with all of these fungus creatures I have Pip's feature is a little special in that it says at the DM's discretion some creatures other than yeah. beasts might be able to communicate with you but I, I think this is still you. outside of that mm. yeah <laughs> um yeah I don't know I couldn't it, really talk to the last wyvern we saw how does anyone speak to their wyverns? I'm confused. <laughs> Could you imagine, like, having a mount and not being able to speak with it? I mean, unless you spoke Wadari and Draconic of some sort. Alright, time to make a decision. Draconic.
I mean, we only have the kit to get someone up safely, one person, right? So if you want to go up by yourself? I want to try. Uh... Can I, like, tell, or I guess, like, quickly teach Talix, like, a couple simple greetings in Draconic? Sure. Yeah, I'll just teach him simple things okay. like... Uh, but Hello, I'm a friend. Talix, you're you're specifically from Bar Barumia, right? No, I'm from Galatenia. Oh crap! You're right. You're right. Barumia. That's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Ah, uh, wow. The DM getting her own. But Pip doesn't lore know wrong. anything. You know. <laughs> uh, mm, 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 mm. Man, nobody's from Barumia. Well, kind of. Sort Pip's of. parents. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's just give it, like, a nature check for everybody. Uh, everyone needs to make a nature check? Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on, dice. Oh! It was on a 20 oh. and then it moved. Okay. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> um, okay, well, it makes sense that that Pip would have heard of this, uh, and uh, uh, for Pontifex as well. Wyverns don't speak. They're not intelligent enough to be able to, to understand uh, a language. That's mm. what makes them, like, ultimately not very dragon. different Yeah, from dragons. They don't have uh, the... Uh, you know, they're, they're... Think of them more like animals, you know? You can teach like them things. Uh, <laughs> sure. Oh, but are they, they don't like understand hostile, language. if not domesticated? Um, uh, wyverns are generally do just like widely domesticated. There's, um, it's uh, think think of them like dogs. There will be oh. some breeds, uh, uh, maybe. Oh, that, let's uh, go. You know. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a big puppy. So. What are you going to do when you're up on the tree? Uh, try to beckon it over? You want to be on a tree when you beckon a big flying thing over? So maybe it's lost and needs help. It, you and know it can land, right? <laughs> maybe it can't. Because of things the fog <clears throat> fine uh, let's try to get a bit closer to it on the ground first and then once we get up underneath it i'll try to climb up if we don't see any situation on the ground first how about that mm. sure we're going that direction anyways right Apparently. You were, yeah. Alright. Okay. The change in your surroundings as you continue, it's it's gradual. You don't notice it right away. But it feels like the color is slowly being drained from this jungle. The terrain below you begins to turn grey. The plants more and more of them, you realize that they are rock solid. They don't, uh, um, their petals, their leaves, they don't move with the wind. Uh, you're beginning, you're beginning to occasionally cough a little bit as your, your feet are kicking up dust. Everything around you is becoming more still and more quiet. And in this quietness, you hear the roar of the wyvern nearby. Wyverns don't do this, right? They don't turn do, things to stone. What? No, they don't. Wy wyverns have like a poisonous stinger and they bite and uh, scratch at things. Okay. Uh, would I, I think know it's... of any, like, 
elemental type of creature that turns stuff into stone. But you know that there is like creatures that. Something? You know that there is creatures that can do it. Some can can breathe a petrifying uh, uh, breath. There's some that if you look at them, you're turning into stone. Uh, but generally, those things work on creatures. They wouldn't turn like the surroundings or even the ground into stone. Hmm. Hmm. I think we've come close enough. I think we're. We can still see ahead of us, though. Normally, right? Ah, uh, yeah. And are the, the trees also stone now? I yeah, I, like half of them, or I guess by now a little bit more than half. Uh, you feel like you're you're on the boundary of where this this cloud is, and it, at this point, with how close you are, and with uh, occasionally volunteering a squeak to to check again. Um, the cloud, it's dust. It's not fog. Okay. Can I, I can I take my handkerchief and bind it around my face like some kind of mask for my mm -hmm. mouth and nose? Yes, absolutely. Bless you. Bless you. Thank yeah, exactly. You. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pip would definitely follow Brooke in that and just make sure his scarf is tied around his mouth and nose um, as they move forward. Yes. Yeah, so, so the rest of you have anything? We don't know what this is. But yeah, since it's not a fog, more like dust. Maybe be careful with what you're breathing, or how much, at least. Okay, before we get much closer, I think it's time for me to go up. Maybe I can get some better idea of, of what we're heading towards, anyway. I just want to get up and see what's going on, and, uh... If we save Jamiel's pet wyvern that no one knew about, then that's good too. Well, good luck. Tell us to put on the climbers, good. Okay. All right, go ahead and Try roll an up. athletics check at advantage. Ooh. Uh, the kit will prevent you ultimately from taking too much damage so you will reach the top regardless of your role it's more about how long it takes you to get there and whether like you do occasionally fall at all um all right. and with with 15. a 15 there's just this um okay do you pick a tree that is a tree or a tree that is stone well since i've got pythons anyway let's pick a petrified one okay um at the very least, the, these branches feel like as sturdy as it could possibly get. Um, and you begin your climb, and it's slow and careful. You're not planning on losing your life just by uh, putting your, your foot in the wrong place. And there is like this one moment when uh, you lose your grip and you end up like just falling 10 feet before your harness catches you. And it's uh, um, it was scary, but it was harmless. Um, and slowly but surely, the, uh, you make your way all the way, like as high up as this tree reaches, and you're um, the higher up you go, the further up ahead you can see. Uh, and uh, it, you too, like you're 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 breathing in this dust a little bit, and it's uh, uh, it's not that that much, but it, it's your nostrils feel dry, and so does your throat. Uh, and once you're at the very top, uh, the visibility is. Uh, a little bit more more limited than it would normally be. There's just this grayness all around you, but you you listen to the roar of the wyvern, and uh, you just keep watching until it comes into view, flying out of the densest part of this uh, uh, dust cloud, and uh, um, not seeing you right away. Um, can I ask for? Um, Let's make it an animal handling check, even though we've determined that they're not beasts, but it's the closest thing we have. I pet one wyvern. I'm not <laughs> ready to stop there. Must pet all the wyverns. 
No! Okay. Um, I think I've got to use my inspiration on that one. <gasps> oh! The dinosaur Austin's... inspiration, but it's not a dinosaur. Oh, thanks for being here, Austin. Bye, oh, yeah. Friends. Bye, oh, Austin. Enjoy your classes. Bye. Don't die. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for the session. Bye. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm still here. <laughs> uh, it's a plus nine, make, right? Make that a twenty-five. Damn. Okay. Uh, so wyverns are not a dinosaurs either, but I'll I'll allow it. Okay. So this was about getting a feel for the demeanor of the wyvern. Uh, you know, there is an entire country, the Boromian Union, back in Plurina that is, that is famous for its wyverns, um, its, its army back during the, uh, the Silent War had uh, uh, employed wyverns uh, and was absolutely terrifying because of that. Uh, so you know them to be these strong, scary, powerful creatures that can very easily tear apart a, a human being. Uh, they are. Uh, they, their their skills make them difficult to actually hit, uh, and you know that. Uh, uh, you know about their stinger uh, that they can poison you with their tail. Um, so this mental image I have of wyverns is that they are um, something to to be feared. This wyvern is itself scared. It looks to be in utter distress. Um, uh, yep, yep, that's 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 it. Oh, you know, I kind of thought that role was for my parts in trying to beckon it <laughs> over to me. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to try to do that now. Uh, sure. I mean, Get I'll, I'll take and, that. Uh, uh, I'll take the check for it. Um, be yeah, because, uh, because you, you got a feel for its current, uh, uh, mood and behavior, um, you make sure that when you get its attention, you absolutely in no way, uh, make yourself look threatening. The wyvern spots you, it's green scales, um, some of the most vivid colors uh, compared to, to your current surroundings. Uh, it, it looks almost like a piece of the jungle that has come alive. Uh, and it's large wings, they make this incredible f uh, noise as uh, this very, very wide creature begins to fly towards you. Hmm. Oh, okay, I didn't really have a follow-up plan. <laughs> it's okay, this will be fine. Uh, I'll dig around in my pack for some meat. You're offering meat to the wyvern? Yes. Okay. Um... The Crap, closest, I really have anything. the closest mm -hmm. the creature gets, uh, the more it's becoming apparent that it's not really slowing down as it approaches you. Mm. Uh, and you see its large claws uh, uh, from its uh, only set of legs, um, reaching for your arm that is offering the the meat, and then closing uh, its talons around your entire forearm. Oh. And he tries to pull you off from the tree. Oh, uh, uh, hold on. Now, you are, uh. you are anchored to it because of your kit. Mm -hmm. um, so, as it begins to pull, and uh, you are... Um, well, roll an athletics check. For funsies. Funsies, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. Yeah, you are no match for oh, its strength, uh. and you are immediately um, uh, removed from the tree. And you you move like almost twenty feet from it before your your rope catches you. 
uh, and you are currently suspended in the air um, uh, a couple of dozen feet away from, from the tree where you, you are anchored to, being pulled uh, by this wyvern who's trying really hard to just drag you somewhere. Oh, hold on. It's, it's trying to drag me, like, away from the cloud, I assume? Towards the cloud. Towards the cloud. Ooh. You know what? It is uh, uh, screeching. All the way down beneath the canopy of the jungle, uh, you guys can hear the screeching. Talix screams for a long while, but then, like, studies himself and... seeing what the wyvern is trying to do. Uh, going off of your previous role... Uh, you don't feel like you are about to become food. It feels right. like the wyvern is trying to deposit you somewhere. The claws around your forearm, although they scared you, they're not yeah, digging it's... into your skin. It's not hurting you. Right, it's trying to carry me. Uh, Talix is going to take out his knife and cut the rope. And then grab onto the wyvern with his other hand. Okay. Uh, you, you I'm going on a journey! <laughs> You cut the rope and you leave like some parts of your of your climber's kit behind again. <laughs> yep, yep. That's just life now. <laughs> this is what happens to you. <laughs> uh, and you take off <laughs> with the wyvern. All right. Well, nice knowing you guys. <laughs> is it this time of the campaign? <laughs> it's the sky ship. Is this how it happens this time? <laughs> All right, cool. Seems like being abducted by dragons is a recurring thing. <laughs> for for Jason's yeah, part, yes, it, it is. literally is all the time. <laughs> that in, too. He never can. Yeah, it happened to my face and took My precious stuff. So now they're gonna abduct you and take your seed. <laughs> that sounds weird. They're gonna take the Valkanoth seed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, how 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 far away is that? How high is the tree? Uh it's a couple hundred feet up. Okay. Well, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Uh hold on. One more thing occurs to Talix before before he cuts the rope. Okay. He's going to try to drop his hat down. <laughs> Hopefully that tells them something. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, just. If it uh, even makes it to the floor. Roll a d twenty. Just yeah, just to see if he gets like caught on the way down. And let's say like fifteen and up, uh, he reaches the ground. Uh, and ten to fifteen, it's like visible, but it remains on the trees. Okay, he doesn't reach all the way down to the ground, but it, it would be, um, it, it would be the tressim that uh, um, would like end up flying up and catching it and bring it, bringing it back down to the party. What is happening up there? We need to do something. <sighs> All right. How do we get up? Uh, yeah, Tekka will prepare his uh, quarterstaff with the hook attachment and attach uh, some rope to that. And we'll try to throw it and hook it onto a branch. Uh, you, you want to climb up to the tree? Mm hmm. Without uh, a climber's kit? Yep. Are you sure you want to do that? 200 feet up? Uh. I mean, me as a player doesn't want to, but Talos is in trouble. That's what the party believes, so. I will have slow fall on deck. Uh, <laughs> um, go ahead and roll an athletics check. Fine. <laughs> 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 F 
fine. <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> so, so I, got, I got a funny <laughs> private message. It's just so... <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, Tekka, uh, you're used to climbing uh, trees. You, you used to do that all the time as a child. And they are one of your favorite resting spots in general. Um, and uh, you know that the tree being taller doesn't make the climb itself more dangerous uh it, it, you know that it's all in your head and like at no point you think about how high up you are you just think about grabbing the next branch and moving upward uh and without uh, without any assistance uh you you reach the top uh you are welcomed by a similar sight to the one that Alex had, had seen. Uh, this, this cloud of dust being uh, directly ahead of you and already partially also encompassing you and limiting your vision a little bit. Uh, up here, there is no sight of Talix, just part uh, of, his, of his kit, uh, the part that's still anchored to the tree, and uh, a, a broken bit of rope that he was actually attached to. Uh, you can see that the the rope hasn't been pulled broken, but it's been cut clean by a blade. And while there is no sign of the wyvern or Talix, all the way up here, you do hear the wyvern's roar coming straight from inside the uh, the cloud of dust. Uh, okay. <laughs> just a big sigh from Tekka. Yeah. <laughs> I've never heard Tekka just sigh like that. <laughs> um, so is it possible to tie rope to the part of the climber's kit that is up there? Or... Um, yeah. You can, like, tie it to the part that's been broken. Okay. Uh, then I think Tekka will do that, and um, yeah, after a quick glance elsewhere on the horizon, nothing else catches his eye, he will start just bringing the rope down, start climbing down. Okay. Uh, your climb down is, is safer because you're using what Talix left behind. Uh, but you, you really didn't need it. Um, having retrieved this equipment, you return to the party and you let them know what you saw. Talix is in trouble. We need to stay together. Prepare mm. yourself. Do we know which direction he went? I hear the roars inside the dust. Then that is where we will go. Uh, yeah, Tekka will uh, wrap his head um, as um, Shemag is like, it's covered his head, so you, the only eyes that are visible. Uh, and then, if we still have one of the fruits, uh, he will kind of like squeeze the fruit out uh, in front of in the front of his face. So, so he will take most of the dust. Okay. Uh, yeah, and if there is no other preparation to do, we'll start heading inside the dust cloud. Alright. As, as for Talix, um, you hold onto the wyvern and the wyvern holds onto you. It, uh, uh, it slows down a little bit to adjust its grip on you. Uh, and you feel safer in its, in its claws than you did in, in, in the harness of your climber's kit. Um, you're not going to fall off of this uh, of this creature. Uh, looking up at it, uh, you see that it is uh, 
there is a large gash on its uh, underbelly uh, that looks uh, pretty fresh and occasionally there's a drip of uh, a, a drop of blood that falls onto you it also has its own harness on um, what from below looks like a saddle and actually uh, looking better at it it's two saddles uh, one after the other at the base of its neck and uh, at the part of its body where the wings are connected to the, to the rest of it uh, but uh, nobody is uh, riding it Visibility becomes a bit lower and a bit lower uh, as the dust around you becomes thicker. Um, but eventually, ahead of you, what you see is utterly unusual and far too big for what it, it seems to be. Um, and uh, at first, uh, your, your mind actually like pauses to try to register what exactly it's looking at. But from up here, you have like a pretty good, uh, uh, a pretty good vantage point. It looks to you like you're looking at an enormous rib cage, so big that you could walk underneath it and just look up at it. Uh, a single one of these bones, uh, far, far, far taller than, than you are. There's some kind of construction all around it, old, uh, um, falling apart, already partially reclaimed by nature, and, uh, you know, the nature that here seems to be half stone and half uh, not. Uh, buildings covered uh, partially in moss and partially in this gray growth that just seems to be moss made of stone. The wyvern doesn't take you to this place, it leaves you a safe distance away from it, back on the ground. Um, but it's it's obviously nervously looking in that direction. So this construction that I saw around the... What? Okay, so... Let me show you. How tall is one rig? Should I be thinking of like a brontosaurus skeleton since we're on the dinosaurs right now or like God damn it. Is this oh, the wrong no. scene? Broken. No, it's not loading. <laughs> it's Hold on a broken. second. Yes, it's, it's broken. It's whatever these little dealies are, little rocks or something. Hold on. For what it looks so far though, it looks pretty cool. Why did yeah, it have sure. to do this to me right now? No! It worked earlier! Now it's broken. Okay, right, I'm going to reload it for the next session. No, 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 no. It's it's fine. It will work. Um, so I need to, you know, restart everything. But uh, uh, in the meanwhile, I will answer your question. So you asked how tall it is? How tall is like one rib? Like, yeah, how um, big is this? Like, it. this thing is partially into the ground, but for the most part, it isn't. And it would be, uh, what, maybe 70 to 80 feet uh, high up? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Jeez. Um, did the construction around it look like Clarnan construction, like colonies? No. Like someone breaking the rules? Okay. No, it looked uh, like old Ladarian. Um, I guess not. I was going to say, mm -hmm. to, uh, even even from the moment that the Wyvern was, or Wyvern was trying to take us, trying to take Talix from uh, from the treetop, uh, Talix had a pretty good idea that maybe it was trying to take him to to its writer to its owner uh so talix would definitely try to uh, i guess we can wait for the table to load back but talix is definitely going to try to uh, heal it assuming that uh we might be getting into some kind of dangerous situation to save whoever's in danger up ahead okay so going off of the previous animal and lane check, um, actually touching this wyvern is, uh, um, wouldn't have been the, the easiest thing to do, but uh, um, this one see, seems to understand your intentions. Um, and even though you, you see that it uh, uh, pulls away from your hand at, at first, uh, more on instinct than, than anything else, um, Ultimately, you're able to, to touch it. Uh, go ahead and roll for your healing. Mm. Ah, there we go. 
Uh, this was the reveal I wanted to do in <laughs> Teda. Oh, a big one. Oh, oh dang. Thank you, Civil TTS, for ruining the, the moment. <clears throat> it made up by sending me to the main menu with the music, so. <laughs> Um, Whoa! I'm gonna cast oh, it. That's big! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whoa. I'll cast that at second level. I'll cast Cure Wounds at second level for now. Okay. Uh, so. uh, does that look like 70 feet up? Approximately. I don't know. We'll see. We'll find out. We'll put our minis down and, mention it, and, and measure it. Aha, uh -huh, average roll. 12 hit points. Let me see where the wyvern is at. Okay. Um, the cache is for the most part uh, healed up. Uh, at least it's not bleeding out. There is there is additional scratches on this wyvern. And uh, the cut itself, if you closed up the deepest part of it. Uh, but it's it's an improvement. Okay. So if Talix starts to walk in that direction, will the wyvern come with me? Um, the wyvern watches you, but is trembling and does not follow you. All right. Um, Talix. Y'all are gonna fucking hate me. <laughs> <laughs> Talix never... is going is going to doff his armor and his backpack, all of his heavy equipment. He's gonna hold on to his knife. Um and he's just going to get low to the ground and try to look for a good way to approach while staying in cover as much as possible. Okay. Uh, let's let's make that a survival check. Okay. Uh, followed by a stealth check. Survival twelve. <laughs> stealth eleven. <Incredible. laughs> okay. All right. Uh, there is cover provided by some uh, some non-stone trees and some stone trees and remains of uh, various kinds of buildings uh, uh, leading up to this place. So you just move from one to the other, uh, glance back at the wyvern occasionally who's watching you closely but not coming uh, with you. Uh, further up ahead, for the time being, you don't spot any movement and you can put your token like at this edge of the map. And like behind this tree. This tree? Yeah. I mean. Okay. So, are there any. I still see that there are little spheres here that I think are unloaded models. Oh no, you see unloaded models? Yeah, all, yeah, I, yeah, all that loaded in was. With little dots. Yeah, all I see is the big. The big spine and ribs. But there's That's like the a, this path of things directly underneath it, like along the spine really? on the floor. Yeah, yeah. Just what, what are things. these? They're tiles. Oh, okay. okay. I just assumed there were stones or something like that. So it's like stone tiles? Yeah. Okay. Like Do I see any movements or any like... Any humanoid creatures or otherwise interesting creatures moving around? Uh, for, for the time being, no. Um, you can also like glance uh, at, m at my stream to see the tiles, but I guess I'll like just delete them next time. <laughs> it works for me. Uh, here. I don't have it open right now. This is so sad. Um, well, yeah, Talix is just going to try to move up. Okay, I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... Talos is just going to try to move up, I guess, to the next wall and just keep his eyes and ears open, you know, if there's any sign of 
whoever might be the writer slash owner of this wyvern or anything else. Right. Um, with your role, you're not really seeing... Um, you're trying to look into the dust to see if there are there are signs of somebody having stepped here recently, but it seems like um, a lot of it has been moved around, and you don't really pick up on it on any particular trail. Uh, you walk past the remains of a fountain, uh, and looking up ahead, this place there is this uh, there is this solemnity to it, uh, um, like the, it's it's somber. It's old, but it's not that old. It feels like it's been just left to itself for a really long time. Uh, and of course, that most striking feature is that you, you can hardly take your eyes off of it. Um, you like, for a moment you try to even imagine an animal this big, but these bones, they look like they're made of stone. Uh, so, you know, somebody just built them that way. Or, well, for a moment you wonder if that's what happened. Uh, the rest of the party is working on catching up. You have Talix's, you have Duchess uh, with you. Uh, and you're probably like trying to make way in a, in a speedy manner, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so... Without tripping, about, uh, without tripping over rock flowers. <laughs> yeah, you're 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 a lot more careful about where you put your feet because every once in a while you come across blades of grass that are made of rock, and it's beginning to be it's beginning to get a little bit difficult to walk around, uh, and you're trying to pick pathways where the grass is low, where you'd be walking onto this solid grass rather than through it. Um, you can you kind of get the feel for it. The horses seem very confused by this, and every once in a while they they almost trip. Uh, but you're you're trying to you're trying to get there fast. Uh, and Talix, you see, you finally spot movement up ahead. Um, How far ahead am I? Am I here? Or? Uh, let's let's put you here. Okay. Uh, behind the remains of this this fallen tree. Uh, and behind, if you if you look like, if you lower your camera and look under the rib cage, uh, it would be next to this uh, broken small pillar over here that you'd see some movement. And at first, you wonder if uh, uh, there is uh, there's a person uh, that you're about to see further up ahead, but it's it's not a humanoid at all. Um, the first thing you notice is uh, something red, just deep red and dripping and with blood it's covered in blood and it's large and it's it's pulsating you see a heart as big as you are with these tendrils uh, made of flesh uh, coming out of it and it's sort of like walking on them let's see if uh... Nope. Okay. Nope. 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 Oh. Uh -huh. oh. All right. Here it is. Oh, right. I need to do a thing because otherwise. Eh, here it is. But let me. Um. Let me do this because my life has to be difficult. Okay. Don't freak out. Oop. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I have to fix the hit boxes. Alright, now we can walk underneath it. Life is in love. Eh, maybe. <laughs> yes, oh. perfect. Okay, name. Cool token. Okay, Talus isn't going to get any closer, he's just going to make sure his breath is steady and quiet and just watch intently and see what this thing does and if it interacts with anything else. It is watch. moving around, uh, slowly dragging itself from one end of this, this ribcage to the other. And you see its tendrils reaching down on the ground and uh, uh, 
touching this column and then it moves beyond it and it like lifts up some of these uh, uh, broken tiles that must have made up the, the floor of this place a long time ago. It looks like it's looking for something. Um, okay. Are all <laughs> is there? Are there any plants around me that are not stone? Uh, some, yeah. Yes. I'm going to try to pick up a little, uh, a little leaf or a blade of grass or something, and send it flying by the hearts, like shooting. I'm not gonna like. I'm gonna have it come around, maybe from the like the left side, and shoot off back into the right. So it looks like it's coming from over by these stairs or something. Okay, are you using your cantrip to move to move the leaf? Yes, and it's just gonna go straight past it. Okay. But but comes pretty close to it, like within ten feet or so. This thing seemingly doesn't have. Uh eyes or ears but you see it visibly react to the leaf and sort of like turning as if it's following uh, it and seeing that it's going uh, elsewhere but it doesn't follow it it just like stops and pays attention to it for, yeah. and to then, it for a second then mm -hmm. goes back. and then goes back to what it's doing which is lifting up tiles and looking for something on the ground Um. yeah well the it's not like lifting up the tiles from the ground, I meant more like the ones that are leaning up against the walls. Um, you, you see it peek behind the the, uh, the ribs and behind the trees. There's these broken walls that used to make, to make up rooms uh, in this building and it's looking behind all of them. Okay. So it's, hmm. So it's looking into another room. Not just one. It will eventually go over to like this side. Like over here. Okay. Uh, I guess. Well, Talus will just circle around to. Whatever side it is not currently in, whenever he decides to finally go forward, and so I guess yeah, I'll go off to the left for now and try to go around the outside because it looks like I can move in anywhere at any time I want. And he's still just gonna try to look and hopefully find something that's not that thing, <laughs> like okay. some people. In the meanwhile, the rest of the party comes across some of Talix's belongings and uh, a wyvern hissing at them. At the group. <laughs> Talix has been here. We are close. I can distract this. Will you look for him? Sure. Don't get lost. Okay. Uh, yeah, then Tekka will try to get the virus' attention, sort of like slam the core staff on the ground, sort of strafe, walk around it, shouting at it. You're shouting at the wyvern? Mm hmm. The wyvern backs down. Oh. It what? It, it backs down. Oh. Oh shit. Tekka doesn't even have to. Okay. Yeah, Tekka doesn't even have to take out the saw. <laughs> this this wyvern is like. Is like uh, 
over twice his height and it's just moving away from him. Yeah. Well done. Oh, okay, fair enough. Something is wrong. Something more is here. If something is terribly wrong. Uh, Telex would never leave his backpack. <laughs> Let alone unattended. This is like his whole life isn't here here. The wyvern is attending to it. <laughs> and he would never trust an animal he can't even speak to to guard it. That's absurd. <laughs> So what do we do? Do we take it or do we just move forward? No, I'm going to take his belongings for sure. If he left them here, there's some reason he couldn't bring them, but the boy has a way of finding himself in terrible situations when he wanders off alone. Hmm, I can see that. He has a tendency to do it, so I simply follow him around like we did doors before. And, <laughs> well, the whole reason I'm here in Vladari. Can you carry it? Or do you want me to carry it? I don't think it is a problem with Farum. That's actually true. I keep forgetting you two have I will just throw his backpack <laughs> onto Duchess. Uh, Pip would uh, know that the Duchess vows to protect Talix's equipment in his <laughs> absence. <laughs> Guard the backpack with her life. Mm -hmm. And his walking stick, I don't even know how he got around without it. <laughs> uh, until you all eventually come into view of uh, the same scene I've described for Talix, you can put your tokens down here. As you begin to enter these old ruins, uh, and you can see uh, directly ahead of you this, uh, this building that has been built around an enormous rib cage. Take touches. Is there anything you want to do or say? Shh. Quiet. Let us move carefully. Hide in the clearing. I think Brooke will pay an extra or extra attention just to see if they're being watched by anything. Of course, you can roll a perception check. Okay. Okay. Of course, your attention is drawn to to the statue of a rib cage. Uh, you end up wondering just how how much work it must have taken to sculpt something like this uh, to bring it all the way over here. Uh, or if it was all made on this spot, uh, and what the purpose of it would even be, uh, why there was a building built around it, and just how massive the whole thing is. Uh, you think back to like the uh, to the work of the giants. Uh, this could be something like that, but uh, uh, you wonder for a moment if it would, if maybe there are giants on on Lidaria. Um, and then you 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 pull your eyes away from the the massive stone ahead of you, and you try to focus instead on the ground. Uh, there's so little color in this area. Most most of the the dirt and the grass is gray, either made of rock or covered in dust. Uh, and so, the moment when something red enters your your field of vision, it it, it pops. It's it's very. Um, very visible in this kind of environment. And it's leaving behind this trail. Uh, you, you look down to see blood, uh, and for, for just a second you want, you, you fear for Talix's well-being, but then you see the trail leading up to this being, uh, gently moving uh, across the floor, uh, just behind the, the ruins of, of, 
uh, of this wall up ahead of you. Uh, something that looks like a heart with tendrils coming out of it and absolutely massive in size. Uh, I need everybody in this group to roll stealth, including the horses. Uh, I guess I can roll for <laughs> Pip and Squeak. would be Pip. And this would be Squeak. Five for Duchess. But he did right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Awesome, thank you. Incredible. Well, your average is good enough. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, that Brooke as you're like keeping your eyes on this being. It just slowly keeps on moving. Uh, Talix would have kept circling around this whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't know how yeah, Talix is moving see. forward, yeah. What's that? Talix is moving forward in like this direction. Yeah, I, I'm like searching, trying to see him and see if I can see any of the signs of people or anything. Um, mm hmm, mm hmm. And it is right uh, around back here that Talix you spot uh, some more movement uh, but this time it's not uh, uh, it's not something red it's it's a it's a person and rather than than red the, the color that uh, um, that catches your attention is this light uh, blue um, you look at uh, uh, a woman a, a Plurnan person an elf uh, whose skin is pale and her hair is uh, uh, this very uh, unusual shade of just light blue. Um, she's she's dressed like uh, uh, appropriately for like a, a long journey. Uh, she has uh, uh, sturdy clothes, uh, a little bit uh, dirty, but otherwise they don't look uh, particularly old. Uh, an outfit somewhat similar to to yours in a manner. Um, and she, like, you scared one another when you spot her, when you turn around a corner and you see that she was right behind this pillar. Um, and she, um, she, like, lets out a small yelp that she immediately suffocates behind her hand. Uh, Tal is just going to try to gesture to her. Like, and I guess just kind of mouth, uh, in Elvish, do you need help? Uh, despite the, whoop, um, or I, I guess after the initial scare, um, she, she just seems to, to visibly, uh, relax a little bit at this. And uh, uh, she glances around nervously and looks back at you and, and nods. Is she armed? Uh, she has uh, a knife on her belt, but otherwise she's not. Are you alone? N no. Mm. Uh, my partner, she's... She's, and she'll uh, point up ahead, and you can barely see through through uh, the rib cage. Uh, in this corner of the building over here, there is a staircase that leads down. <gasps> I 
mind your trying to go in there? Um, I, I, I need to get her out. That thing, what is it? I don't know, but there's many of them. They're and all over the And what have you place. seen them do? Th they've attacked us. They, they separated us. With what? Magic? No, they're, they're, um... They're, they're tentacles. They, uh... And, and, and they scream and they cry and... Ah! They're, they're horrible. They hurt my, my ears. I've never seen anything like them. We didn't do anything to them. Alright. What are the others doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the others are currently hidden, so what would you like to do? Slowly move forward and look for Talix. Yeah, look for signs of Talix. Alright. Uh, I'll take survival checks from the from the humanoids in the party. I'll just do one for Pip. And Duchess try. It, Duchess can try, but Duchess cannot <laughs> do it. What did you say? What kind of check? Sur survival. Survival. Oh. Uh, the trail in the dust left behind by Talix is, uh, is fresh. Um, and uh, Pip and, and Pontifex both pick up on it. Uh, and you're able to sort of like just retrace Talix's steps uh, while remaining hidden. Uh, so as he has stopped to, to talk to this woman, uh, this would be roughly the time when you kind of catch up to him. You see him up ahead uh, on, on the outside edge of this building. Um, is there some kind of check I can I can make to try to like identify what kind of creature this giant ribcage belonged to? Uh, or, like, yeah. So even a category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it uh, make it a um... make it a nature check. But I thought they thought it was a sculpture. <laughs> right. Like we're trying to figure out what sculpture this would and be. What off. is it a sculpture of? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry if that wasn't clear. Oh, it's obviously not a sculpture, but whatever. <laughs> Jesus. There we go. Uh, well, Pontifex, you've had, like, pretty recent experience with creatures uh, such as these. Uh, you can uh. see the bones that protrude from one side uh, that would have, like, connected to, to wings. Uh, and, you know, that this is definitely, well, this is in the shape of what the, the skeleton of a dragon would have been like. Uh, Scaling-wise... You said that uh, when Lord of the Sky jumped off the cliff and then, you know, gigantic mega dragon flew off, was that about this size or bigger or smaller? The Lord of the Sky was smaller. Smaller than oh. this. So this is even bigger than him. Mm hmm. Sweet Jesus. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think Pontifex's eyes are just glued to this thing the whole time, like, kind of slack jawed. I guess the Lord of the Sky is not the biggest dragon. Hmm. This is a dragon. Ah uh, yes, you see the bones there that would protrude. Those are for uh, for the wings. Then we are not welcome here. Well, it looks like dragons aren't either. <laughs> and we aren't a dragon. So I see no problems, but uh, it is making me uncomfortable being around this thing given the recent events, so I'd like to find Alex and leave. I agree, let's hurry. Let's hope he wants to leave too. Well, let us <laughs> hope that the uh, dragons of this scale are some sort of ancient breed that died out because I don't want to deal with that. Uh, 
Just think of the amount of food they have to eat. Find that much. Uh, Talix, the attention of the Elven woman snaps behind you. Uh, you see her taking a step further behind the spiller, and you you immediately turn around just to to find that your your party members have caught up to you. Oh. Uh, hey there. I think uh, Pontifex is going to like gingerly climb down off of Faroon. Uh, and walk <laughs> the way you rode the cowboy. horse? Huh? You rode the horse over? Yeah, right. We have the horses. <laughs> you were selling on a horse? <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> but uh, he's going to walk up to Talix kind of uh, gently with like his hand up and then just like a big, just like a big solid bonk slap across the face <laughs> head that only a man with seven strength and four decks can do. Uh, <laughs> Like a, like an old man scolding a toddler. You're stupid. And then he's gonna hug him. <laughs> Look, the wyvern led me here. Aha, uh -huh. the wyvern there's... that you insisted on dealing with alone. Yeah, and it wanted me to come here. Look, there's one more trapped inside. In the ruins. Downstairs. Uh, did you see that heart creature? What? The the big heart. Oh, there's no way you don't know what I I'm talking about. Do if we? You've seen it. Yeah, we saw it. <laughs> Gotta check that shit too. <laughs> uh, like you, the player, haven't seen the token. Uh, no, I've seen the token. Oh, but okay. I'm just just yeah, yeah, what yeah. is doing uh, with that. I didn't think that the, the characters it's... had seen it. That's that's kind of my bad because I said a Brook spotted it, but oh. like Brook yeah. would have pointed oh. it out to the rest of you. Um, so it's my bad. I'm sorry. No, I yeah, should. I should have. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, You've all been made yeah. aware that it was something up ahead. So, so yeah, what I've I been guess... able to like, have I heard of or, or any instance of an animated heart or something like that? Otherwise, does this heart seem about the right size for a dragon of this scale? That kind of thing. Kind of small, um, piece actually. together some puzzles. Okay. Let's make this an arcana check. Based on your previous nat 20, I will already tell you right away that this art, if this had been a real dragon at some point, um, it doesn't look like a... It, it looks like a humanoid art, heart. Um, hmm. Okay. So, and, and it does seem slightly too small for, uh, you know, assuming a, a dragon of this yeah. size ever existed. Uh, though, of course, the heart itself is too big for a humanoid. Um, but in terms of whether you ever heard of anything like this, no. No, okay. never. But it's humanoid. Mm -hmm. Is the, the key takeaway. Got it. Yeah. So here's what I've learned in the few minutes that I've been here. Uh, they attack unprovoked. There's more of them than that, than that one. And they screech really loudly. Uh, like enough to... to knock you out. So... Yeah. So we need cover to... our ears. Well, yeah, and we need to get down there somehow. Oh, excuse me, miss. I, I didn't catch your name. It's... It's Freda. Um... Freda. Uh, can you help us? Of course. That's a phantom. Uh, That's their job. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Volunteering Brook. <laughs> For a fee. <laughs> oh, we can figure that out later. That's not important. But uh, are there more of are there more of those down there? Have you seen down there? Yeah, yeah, I I was down there and I uh, I got separated from the Vami and I got chased out. I th they're looking for me, I, I, I'm i sure of it. They chased you out and now they're looking for you? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They, they tried to grab me. 
I'm gonna make an insight check. Is that okay? Uh, what are you trying to to? Is she is actually... she lying about how she got out here? I'll go for it. Um, not that you can tell. No, she okay. seems uh, uh, scared and uh, um, uncomfortable with the amount of people here. Uh, she she's like pulling away from your group a little bit. Uh, uh, she seems so overwhelmed and uh, definitely scared out of her mind. It's just her down there, right? She's the only one we need to save? Um, she, she's the only one down there, but uh, I don't know where Murder Claw went. <laughs> Tell uh, such a I'm cute sorry, name for uh, your lovely companion. Telix, what are you getting us into? He brought us. He he brought me here. He's Wait, the wyvern, wyvern is Murder Claw, and that yeah. is your wyvern. He's he's actually very sweet. I it's bet like, he's the bestest boy. Okay. He he was very nice to me. Okay. I feel like this is invalidating whatever lesson you should have learned. <laughs> so. <laughs> the mission is what the lesson is trust your instincts and also trust Wyverns. Um, <laughs> so we can do this, right? Save one person, get out, try not to die. You feel okay about this? Well, <laughs> let's put an emphasis on that last part. Who is this? Um, Where are you? I, are, you are you asking the woman? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, uh, she's putting like her hands together, kind of twisting your fingers together. She says, S "Sorry, um, I'm afraid." Uh... There's no need for an interrogation right now. Right? She's been through a lot. We How can you know? ask because I can tell. I mean, she's being honest. I'm sure there's more to her story, but we can get to that later. Right now, someone's in trouble, and we don't know what's happening to her down there. Who named Murder Claw? <laughs> um, it, it 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 was my partner. And this partner is also a good person. Oh my goodness. <laughs> the the best. I am sure. You are lousy heroes. Let's go. <laughs> oh, okay. I'd like you to meet my cat, Famine and Pestilence. <laughs> <laughs> She's a good girl, I promise. <laughs> the, but the, the horses should stay. Devami has a bit of a, a sense of humor like that. Eh. Murder clock actually failed. Um, it could not be. Um, could not work in in the army because he he was too skittish. Yeah, my uh, my horse over there, uh, Grave Stomper, also could not. <laughs> I love point effects. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose there's no getting up to her with Alex without helping these people. We will talk about this later. Let's get her out. <laughs> These two, like, <laughs> stern, stern grandparents. Look lecture from mom and dad later. <laughs> oh good, you brought my armor. Lovely. <laughs> Okay, what's the plan? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing is we need to get to the stairs, so let's try to distract that thing over there and run over. Oh wait, when did the second one get there? <laughs> uh, you, yeah, you look in that direction, you can see another one of those creatures climb, um, like climbing, uh, making its way up the, the stairs and uh, just slowly emerging and uh, uh, seemingly 
looking around despite the lack of eyes and you all just like flatten yourselves behind various trees and pillars the the uh, the horses under your uh your command they, they back away a little bit <clears throat> i think it might react to sounds professor you can make a sound appear somewhere right or is it only from yourself no uh, i can hold on armless tremors instantaneous sound that originates from point of my choice of the range yes i can absolutely uh, yep uh, but it has to be spooky yeah sure uh, like thunder or like raven cries or like whispering Try whispering. No, it, it doesn't have to. I could make it do whatever. Uh, but I can only do it to about like a 30 feet or so. Oh. I've brought up the grid so you can more easily measure distances. So uh, there's not much of a likelihood of me doing it in a place that doesn't immediately provoke something uh, to us. Now, you know, I can cause an explosion off in a, a, quite a distance, but... Seems like a waste of a perfectly good explosion. Well, what's our best way of getting a clear path to those stairs? Has anyone else got on anything? Okay. Well, they don't look like they could fly, so... Presumably, uh, the cat here could go rustle around and then fly about. Or squeak, uh, he can just go invisible. So you want us to see down there before we go? Uh, oh, I was saying for the familiars to uh, draw them away, but uh, that is an even better idea if uh, squeak can just go and look. Unfortunately, he is at the beach. <laughs> no, he came back. All right, yes, he did. I forgot. I did the voice. What do you want to do with Squeak, <laughs> exactly? Go uh, invisible squeak and to go check visible them. and go check the stairs. Like go down go the stairs. Look for us. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, sure thing. All right. Um, beneath this building it is dark but that's not a problem for for squeak um who cautiously moves around uh, uh, and tries to make uh, I I he might even decide not to not to fly just to avoid making any any noise and just uh, um takes a peek at what's downstairs uh and it becomes apparent very very quickly that beneath this enormous uh, uh rib cage uh lies something um of a Oh great, the word is escaping me right now. An underground, it's a crypt. Uh, there's coffins that are humanoid sized on both sides, uh, like to the left and to the right of Squeak. Um, and it looks like, like uh, yeah, and it looks like it expands uh, into various directions. Uh, sorry, I'm just checking my notes. They just are... really remembered that Pip can't speak to us to describe this while he's in Squeak, can he? Uh, uh, he, no, he, yeah, can he can describe it. Oh, well, that's speak. right, he can speak this. Yes. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it will, yeah, Squeak will have to come back. Uh, by the time he does, he tells you as much, and he tells you that it's some more of those hearts. Um, some are slightly bigger than, than others, and some are slightly smaller. Uh, but overall, they are, they're all, you know, way, like, like they're people-sized, like the entire heart. Uh, there's more of them below ground. He did not spot uh, any humanoid. Any chance you remember which direction she's in? Trader? Uh, I... I... I, I know where we got separated. Hmm. Are you, uh... Are you any good with magic or anything of the sorts? 
I... I... N nothing useful. Well, you even out here if you can't fight. How did you even get here? I have so many questions as well. Murder claw. <laughs> my partner and I were, were we're archaeologists. We whenever anything bad happens, it's it's she keeps me safe. Right, so we need to find her. All right. I, I know I'm I'm useless. It's all my fault. You really Sorry. shouldn't be out this far. We, we, Look, but we wanted okay, we wanted to find her. I we thought it's, it it would have would have become so famous if we could have found her and and here she is. And she points up at the rib cage. What dragon is this? Uh, the... Uh, the Ladarians, they, they call her... They, they, have a, they have a name for, for her. Uh, it, it would translate roughly to... The... The Stilling Dread. These naming conventions are ridiculous. Alright, well, it is a lot bigger than the Lord of the Sky, so I'm going to assume that uh, is more important. What, what's important is, is that we all get out of here alive. It's all that matters. Right. Hmm. We'll, we'll make sure that happens. Okay. I guess the only next thing to do is to get down there ourselves. So... Clear path to the stairs. Mm. Okay, tell you what. Uh, you can, you can, you can think about this, uh, and uh, you you'll have a plan by by next session. Uh, I'd like for everybody to be to be here for it. Okay. Uh, so we can better involve Pip and Squeak. Moving forward. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Uh, and yeah, for the time being, we, we can we can stop here. Shorter session. All right. I hope you had fun. Yeah. yeah. Ah, there's so much that happens. What in the world? I'm sorry <coughs> for Was this you. planned? What do you mean, what's this planned? What's this planned for the session? Yeah, the, the wyvern would lead. I thought it was pretty clear that the yeah. wyvern was going to lead us. It, it huh. didn't have to happen on this session. I just have, like, okay. but, you know. Cool. I <laughs> like it. Uh, all right. I'm going to call the stream here. And uh, we'll see when we can play next week. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds cool. good. Out. Thank you for being here today. And I'll see you next session. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye.